Brian had mentioned that he had seen several proofs of this formula, but they're pretty non-intuitive. And I told him that I remembered an old argument that I think is actually pretty close to Euler's original argument for why this formula should be true. So anyway, if you want a rigorous proof, this is not going to do it. But if you want to just see where this formula comes from, it's really pretty easy. So hopefully you'll like it. Anyway, if you don't know what the Euler McLaurin summation formula is, it just tells you how to find the finite sum in terms of the corresponding interval. So, so you see these, that's a Riemann sum for this, and then it explicitly gives the error, which is, so this parentheses j minus 1 means these are the derivatives of that, so you take j minus 1 derivatives, and then plug in 0 and n and subtract the answers. Uh, these b's here, these are the so-called Bernoulli numbers, which here in a second, uh, I'll tell you what those are in case you never seen them before. Cool, cool. Well, like most things in math, if you want to prove something, it becomes a whole lot easier if you go up one level of abstraction. So instead of working with functions, we're going to work with operators. So uh, I'm going to work in the space of all real analytic functions. Which real analytic just means that you can write them as a Taylor series and they're actually equal to their Taylor series everywhere. Uh, I've got two operators I'm going to care about. One is good old fashioned derivative, so it takes a real analytic function. So the derivative of f or df is just going to be, well, a prime of x. The other one I'm going to want, since I'm doing these discrete sums, I'm going to need a little shifting operator. So ef on x is going to be, well, just do f instead of doing it at x, evaluate it at x plus 1. Okay. And let me tell you real quick why this is a really interesting thing to do. Well, your Taylor's theorem that you learned in calculus 2, you can actually write really, really succinctly in terms of these operators, D and E. It's just E is equal to the exponential of the differential operator. So I'll show you why that says Taylor's theorem here on the next slide. So let's go to the next one. All right. So Taylor's theorem, there's a few different ways to write it, but one of them is f of x plus h is f of x plus f prime of x times h over 1 factorial plus f second derivative of x, h squared over 2 factorial third derivative of x, h cubed over 3 factorial, and so on and so forth. Well, I want to look at this as an operator thing. First thing I notice is that all these functions are, they're all evaluated at the same point. They're all evaluated at x. So I'm going to do the evaluation at x last. So I'm going to hit f with some sort of operator, and then I'm going to evaluate it at x. Well, what operator do I need? The first term here is just f of x. And I've already got f of x, so I'm just going to put the identity operator. The second term, I've got the derivative of f and then h over 1 factorial. So that's h times the differentiation operator over 1 factorial applied to f at x. Next one, we do the derivative twice, so that's d squared, and then h squared over 2 factorial, so h squared d squared over 2 factorial, f at x, and then h cubed d cubed over 3 factorial, f at x, so on and so forth. And then you recognize this thing in parentheses, this is the Taylor series for the exponential function. 
So this is just equal to E to the HD on F. So sure enough, this shift by H operator is just E to the HD. And that's how you can write it as E to the H is E to the HD. So that's a very succinct way of writing Taylor City. In particular, if H is 1, we get, as I advertised, E is E to the D. Okay. Uh, there's one more piece of background thing, which is what are the Bernoulli numbers? And I'm just going to give you the Taylor series definition. There's a specific function. It's x over e to the x minus 1. And then by definition, the Bernoulli numbers are just if you write out the Taylor series for that function. So it's just, that's it. Here's a real analytic function. And it has a removable singularity at zero. So you can write it as a Taylor series. And the coefficients of that Taylor series, that's the definition of the Bernoulli numbers. Right. And when we do this proof here in just a second, this is how this, these Bernoulli numbers are going to come up. We're actually going to see this function. And we'll say, hey, we know that if we wrap that as a Taylor series, we just get Bernoulli numbers. All right, so let's actually go about getting the Euler Maclaurin summation formula. So let me start at summing series. So we sum from 0 to n minus 1, f of k. Well, that's, if I just write it out, that's f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, up to f of n minus 1, all right? I want to do something like I did for the Taylor's thing, right? This is just an operator applied to f and then all evaluated at zero. So I want to just evaluate at zero. I want to apply some operator here to f. And then take the next. What operator do I need? Well, just like before, let's just go a term at a time. f of zero should come first. So that's kind of what I've already got. So start off with the identity operator. Then I want f of 1. So I still just want to do f, but I want to shift the 0 up to 1. So that's exactly what my operator e does. So e f of 0 is equal to f of 1. Same thing. If I do the shifting operator twice, e squared f on 0 is just f of 2. And then all the way up to e n minus 1. You can see where the operator thing really makes your life simpler. We didn't know anything about this function other than, I mean, I said real analytic, but otherwise it could be a polynomial, it could be exponential, it could be sine and cosine. I mean, we don't know anything about it. So we had no idea how to go about some of the series. But when we shift over to the operator side, that's just a geometric series. No matter what f is, the operators are always making a geometric series. So we can add them up. So this is going to be e to the n minus i over e minus i applied to f at z. So the only, the only real issue is making sense out of this funky operator right here. Well, it kind of has two pieces. Let me take the top part first. Actually, let me wrap the top part out even in front of the whole thing. So, e to the n minus i applied to whatever 1 over e minus i f is. So, i over e minus i f at 0. Well, i, I mean, so. Let's pretend for a second we know what this function is. So we have some function here. We're doing the identity operator on the function at zero. That just means plug in zero. But the other one, I mean here there's some function. We'll figure out what it is in a second. We've got take this function, shift it by n, and then plug in zero. Well, 
it's the same thing to just take this function and plug in in, right? So really all we're doing is we have some function here that we'll figure out in a second. We plug in in, plug in zero, and subtract the answers. So this is really just whatever i over e minus i, oops, e minus i, f is evaluated from zero again. So the only thing we have to left to do is figure out what i over e minus i is as an operator. This is when a little bit of Euler magic comes in. So let's pretend like we're Euler for a second. So i over e minus i. Well, the first thing we do is we remember what Taylor's theorem said. It was that e is really the exponential of the differential operator. So I've really got i over e to the d minus i. And now we'll remember what the generating function for the Bernoulli numbers were. The Bernoulli numbers were x over e to the x minus 1. So it was sum of bk x to the k over k factorial. That's nearly exactly what we got here. The only thing is we don't have a, a d up top. We have identity up top. So let's put a d up top. So I can rewrite this as d inverse times d over e to the d minus i. And of course, the derivative is actually not invertible. But again, remember, we're about to plug in n and 0 and subtract the answers. So that arbitrary constant will cancel out. So it is invertible up to an arbitrary constant that's going to wash out once we actually do the e the n minus i part of the deal. Okay, so let's just keep going. Alright, so that's d inverse times sum from 0 to infinity dk d to the k over k factorial. Uh, I'm just going to take this d inverse, move it inside, so that'll turn into k minus 1. And it looks kind of funny starting the sum with 0 and having a minus 1 in there. So let me go ahead and pull out the very first term. So the very first Bernoulli number is 1. So d0 is 1, 0 factorial is 1. So the first term in this series is just the identity operator. So I really have, if I take that first term out, uh, d inverse and then plus going from 1 to infinity dk over k factorial d to k and if I move that d inverse inside that becomes k minus and so now we're done so, so we had our sum that we started with we had already got it was i over e minus i f from 0 to n and we just see i over e minus i is this guy. So inverse of derivative, of course, is integral. So we have integral 0 to n, f of x dx, and then plus sum from k equals 1 to infinity, the Bernoulli number over k factorial, and the k minus 1 derivative. evaluated from the end. So, 